The following program is a WNYC production. I'm Steve Sullivan. This is Around New York. My guests are the Empire Brass Quintet with Kurt Wartman playing percussion. They're going to play music for you from their latest album called Passage. around New York. I'm Steve Sullivan. The Empire Brass Quintet are five musicians, all of whom have held positions with leading American orchestras. They're the first brass ensemble to win the Nomberg Chamber Music Award. They've been featured on television programs such as ABC's Good Morning America and the NBC Today Show, and radio programs such as St. Paul Sunday Morning and Around New York. Their latest recording is for Telarc. It's called Passage, 138 B.C. to A.D. 1611. From that album, they'll play for you the first Delphic hymn. Here are my guests in this hour of Around New York, the Empire Brass. <laughs> Delphic hymn from their Passage CD, The Empire Brass, and Kurt Wartman playing percussion. Welcome to the program. This is Rolf Smedvig, who is the Thanks, Steve. solo nice to trumpet. Be back. Nice, to, nice to have you back on Around Good the Yard. Yeah. Would you introduce the folks on the band? Absolutely. On French horn, we have Eric Rusk. On tuba, Mr. Ken Amos. Okay. Douglas R. Wright on the trombone. This is Jeff Kerno on the trumpet, and myself, I'm Rolf Smedvig. And our drummer is Kurt Wortman. This album is um, all based on modal music. Um, can we do a real brief discussion on what modal music is? It's, it's really the basis of all the, uh, of Western music, isn't it? It really is. It's basically a notation system of numbers, a full step, half step. Um, modal system has to do with modes, and there's such modes as the Lydian mode, 
which the difference between a Lydian mode, not to get too technical, but from an F major scale, for instance, the fourth would be a B flat, and in the Lydian mode, it would be a B natural. Mm -hmm. And it, it's got a very interesting harmonic sound, and you heard that in this first Delphic hymn, this modal system. You also were heard in, incorporated in that this rhythmic structure, which is very important, a 5-8 feel. Although all, none of this music had bar lines, uh, right. the musician really had to determine where that beat was, whether it was one and two, one, two, or one, three, or whatever it might be. Now you're about to play something of Hel Hel Hildegard von Bingen, if I can say it. Uh, who was, um, who's now gaining prominence once again. Absolutely. Um, she was an incredible woman, obviously. As a matter of fact, she's probably one of my favorite composers now. She was a visionary, she was an abbess, and she was summoned by probably the most, the greatest minds of her day. Um, there's wonderful spiritual content in her music. And this particular piece that we're going to play, the phrase structure is very interesting because no two phrases are alike. Although, at the end of the piece, which is about three and a half minutes in length, one becomes very familiar with this certain harmonic structure. Mm -hmm. This is the spiritual dance of Hildegard von Bingen, and it's played for you by my guest today on Around New York, the Empire Brass.
The spiritual dance of Hildegard von Bingen is played by the Empire Brass Quintet. What you're doing with these tunes might not be so far out of line with what the composers back then would have done. You used different I things. Think they you used, loved it. You yeah. used digital percussion and yeah. things. But it was expected that you would do something. In fact, these tunes weren't even written in a key per se. No, that's correct. That's absolutely yeah. right. No key indications. And in some of the paintings, in some of the cave wall paintings and even some of the Egyptian tombs, they had some incredibly sophisticated instruments oh, really? that, they, that they actually played on that we've now lost, that all we have really are pictures of these particular instruments. Now, if those composers of that particular day saw a trumpet, for instance, now this trumpet was manufactured and built, designed in the 1950s, although if they had it a thousand years ago, I'm sure that the, the Aryan people you know, signaling their, their wars and signaling, signaling their uh, aggressive behavior, certainly would have used trumpets to uh, call, the call of the wild. Use, use yours to play something else. What, what is this next piece? Well, this next one is going to feature actually our trombone player, Doug Wright, and this is uh, called De Profundis, and it's by Nikolai Parme. Now, this particular arrangement is a very simple arrangement in that Doug will play a chant line, which will be answered by the chorus, the chorus being, being the Empire Brass. Sort of antiphonal. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And this is really the beginning of spiritual question and answer kind of music. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a statement and then a response. And it's very similar, actually, to gospel music of today. So this is De Profundis, Out of the Depths. Out of and the this Depths is the of Sorrow. And this is the Empire Brass, my guests on Around New York today.
De Profundis, played by the Empire Brass Quintet. Rolf's Medvig. Who, who wrote the tune again? Nikolai Parme. Yeah, about the year approximately? Oh, 1210? Yeah. Something like Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, how did you end up with uh, Bruce Springsteen's drummer? Yeah. Introduce <laughs> me once again to Kurt Actually, Wartman. Actually, he's not Bruce Springsteen's drummer, but he did appear in the, uh, the soundtrack, the Philadelphia movie, with Bruce Springsteen. Mm -hmm. Among other people, he's also played with Sinead O'Connor, and he's the drummer of the Mark Isham Band, who's the Los Angeles-based um, motion picture writer. I met Kurt uh, actually through a mutual friend, a musician here in New York, he introduced me to him a couple of years ago on the phone, and he said, Rolf, you really ought to get together with this guy. I mean, he just does incredible things with percussion. And he came out to uh, my place up near Tanglewood uh, a couple of years ago, and we started demoing this little record that we call Passage. Passage, the current one. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Kurt is a f really a pioneer in the electronic drumming world. Well, I think anybody can see that he's not sitting in front of a standard drum <laughs> set. So, um, Kurt Wortman, how about a little demo of what you're... Uh, you actually beat on that thing. Yeah, basically... These are basically just uh, touch-sensitive pads or controllers that release sounds that I've recorded in, in this box back here, which is basically a computer. And uh, so th the simplest way of saying it is like, you, you know, you see synthesizer players that control things from a keyboard. Uh, now there's all sorts of alternatives for drummers. For instance, this pad setup, uh, they're called drum cats. Cats? And drum cats, uh, made by a company called Cat. I see. Instead and, of and drum so kit, it's a drum Cat. Kit, they have all, yeah, they've gotten a lot of mileage with, with the <laughs> name. I call my guys cats. Too. Yeah, <laughs> the cats. The cats. And uh, so they're just controllers, and basically it's up to your imagination. Uh, I, I have, you know, I use a lot of different sounds. A lot of them aren't drum sounds at all, and some, a lot of them are. Uh, but you could take, you know, four guys with four of the drummers with this setup, and we'd all have radically different approaches because it's really an invisible set up. It's just a controller or whatever. Do you have to, do you have to relearn how to, because the drummer l learns where all the drums are on a trap uh -huh. set, so you can just automatically... It's it a set. bit like an actor, it's more like an actor uh, learning lines, you know, where you don't really think about it after you've learned the lines. Each one triggers the next one, but as we go through each kit, or each, um, excuse me, each song, uh, the, the pads remain oh. the same, but the sounds, of course, change oh. every single song, so it actually comes pretty easily. You just, you just you reprogram. Don't, yeah, you reprogram, and, and then in terms of just remembering where they are, you just, by playing, it just, it just happens. Right? So this next piece is called Hopper Dance. Um, what are you going to do on that? Um, okay, this basically, it's a, a pagan, pagan dance as opposed to some of the more, you know, uh, church-based or sacred music that we've done. This is, uh, this moves between, uh, basically, I recorded this instrument, which is a dumbek, which I play, Middle Eastern instrument, this sound. Uh, that's in the, more, the lighter sections, uh, accompanying, for instance, Eric when he's playing his, his solo and, and, and Rolf when he's soloing. And then the real bombastic, you know, sections, which are more large toms, large orchestral bass drums, that type of sound. So it, my role moves between those two. I can hardly wait to hear it. This is called Hopper Dance. And this is the Empire Brass Quintet. And Kurt Workman plays the drums. They're my guests on Around the York today.
Thank you.